I've been creating an epic Minecraft world for a year and a half. In that time I've conquered the end, built crazy farms and constructed an immersive steampunk town filled with details and lore all in Minecraft survival. And now I'm taking the world up a gear. I've put the next seven episodes of the series together into a full movie length experience. Perfect for you to chill out to or put on while studying or going to sleep. If it's your first time and you want to catch up on how we got here, check out the original full movie linked in the description. But here's a 50 second recap to refresh your memory. I spawned in a tree, travelled thousands of blocks, took over a village, found a mesa, made some serious progress and built an epic starter base. I got some villagers, found a stronghold, defeated the dragon, got my wings and built a cool wool farm in a steampunk factory. Went farm mad with an OP copper farm, defeating an ocean monument to build a guardian farm and finally built a super smelter on the docks. Now to break some bedrock, build a gold farm, trade with some piglins, flatten a huge area of mesa and get myself a storage system. Before placing 30,000 pressure plates, making wither skeleton farm and building more factories. Next I chopped down a mangrove swamp, raided an ancient city, made a tree farm and added a boat house to the dock. I upgraded my wither skeleton farm, removed a mountain, made a raid farm and copper aging machine and built a cleric temple into the cliffside. Then I zombified some villagers, made a frog light farm, built a cliff railway and made a startling discovery. So now let's settle in and get ready as we go into overdrive and continue on Aidy's adventure. Hello there and welcome back to Adicraft. For you today I've got an awesome base expansion with some crazy builds, big improvements to the storage system, more terraforming and more farms. So don't go anywhere. But first, the elephant in the room, or should I say the amethystine. I planted this in a bell jar last episode and I cannot help but notice that it's grown significantly. And what's more, it seems to be giving off some weird energy. So not wanting to miss an opportunity, I want to harm Harness its power for some of the future builds. It's free real estate. So time to get going with a little upgrade. So I've got some materials together now to connect this up. A little bit of electrical engineering later and that's now done. So I've added some capacitors into the tree and that's taking some of the power through these cables. Firstly over to this generator over here to turn this into some storable energy and takes that underground. And then we've got another one over here. And this is the one that's probably going to be used first of all to pump some of the power through to this new area. So we're going to build out this canal around this corner and add our new buildings just over here. So it's time to clear out my makeshift chorus farm and start digging out some of this land. And the best way to do that is with a time lapse. And so all the digging is now done in this area. And now I need to head back over to the storage in there to pick up a whole bunch of the different stone variants and the various other blocks in order to lay the foundations ready for the canal itself, which the water just stops here at the moment. And also the builds that are gonna go here. And we've got some really interesting builds going on uh, in the future. So let's go and get that done. A few moments later. And with a whole bunch of resources now in these shulker boxes and in my inventory, I am ready to start filling this in. And this is probably gonna take a little while. So it's time for another time-lapse. I've now filled all of the docks and the walkways in. There's a couple of little gaps going on for some various things that I'm gonna add in later on and also the flooring for some of these buildings. But the main thing that you'll notice is this big gap here. And this is gonna be the next bridge. So in a little bit, I am going to collect some resources and get that done. You had enough time lapses. So I'll just show you what it's like when it's finished and do a little bit of the decoration around these areas. But now it's time for sleep. And following a good night's rest, I've now finished this bridge. It's pretty simple. It's following the similar design that we used over here, but this one is obviously on a bit of a slope. And so this will now make it so much easier for us to come between this, our main storage building, and the new area and everything that's gonna go on up here. So I'm pleased with how this has turned out. And you'll also see that I've now filled in all of the water here, just going through with a bucket and I've missed a little bit here somehow. Um, those are always a bit of a pain when they don't just quite spread, but I need to go and get my bucket and fill that in and then on to the next thing. And that is an expansion to this storage system. So I've already filled up all of these automated bins and I've got a whole bunch of resources just sitting randomly in these chests 
that I'm not too pleased about and I'd rather get at least some of them, the ones that are kind of all over the place, into their own rightful spots. And to do that, I'm going to start digging out behind this area towards where we've just done the canal and basically clear out a big hole to fill with a bunch more storage. This has been dug out now and all of my tools have been fixed up as well using the clerics over in the temple area. Next thing I need to do is add in some walls and some flooring just to give me the basic outline to build in. Then I need to take this stuff out and start building in the rest of the storage system which is going to be coming along and round because it's going to be two levels on this particular section. So yeah, time to get going on the walls. The walls, floor and ceiling are mostly in. There's a couple of little gaps these are going to be some machines that are going to link through to the surface and this wall is going to be copper as is this section under here so I need to get over to the aging facility grab some of that copper and wax it all up but it's given me the basis now so that I can start thinking about putting in the main bits of the machinery before adding the decoration around so that's going to be the next thing clearing this out and building up the storage system and a long long time later all of the extra storage bays are now in place and I've added in the water stream. The hole was here and connected up to this section here so it now diverts all the way around, connects up to this extra section right the way around the top and then connects in where it started, goes back and forth, back along the bottom here and then we did have the overflow at this end but now it just carries on and overflows just in the corner here as we can see. So that's where all of the leftover items are going to be that can then be sorted into some of these chests and these ones as well. And I've just emptied everything out of the chests that I had and dumped them in here. So that's going to be a big job later on, probably one for off camera. But I have started some of the decoration. I need to finish this now. The other thing that I've got is this little area here, which given that I spend so much time in here, I wanted to make this more homely. So using a similar theme to what we've got in the submarine and I'm going to add in some further decoration here just to like I say give myself a bit of a base in the storage system and yeah now I have to do the decoration that is probably going to take a long time as well so wish me luck 2000 years later and although I am now exhausted the decoration in the new section of the storage area is complete so the first thing you'll notice is that this slime pipe now comes into this reservoir to give some slime supply downstairs and this then comes out of here through these underground tubes into this machine here and through into this furnace which has got a lovely blue flame. Then down here we've got the nice relaxing base area where we can stare out into the canal from underwater and also things like the grandfather clock and just some nice seating. So we've also got some hidden lighting coming through underneath these honey block lights and I've just put some of the item frames in ready to go but I still haven't set any of the filters so nothing in these yet but I'm really pleased how this looks. We've got the bed here which is a nice central location for whenever I do need to sleep and yeah this makes this whole area look a lot lot more useful and it gives me an extra 36 bays here as well for all the storage that I could possibly want. Now whilst having a seat in the new area it's time to talk about grinding resources. As some of the people in the comments have said that they would like to see a little bit more of the resource grind however a lot of the resources that I actually get are based on some of the farms that I've built. With things like cobblestone, smooth stone and basalt coming from the farms that I have in my storage area. An absolutely amazing tree farm that works on just about every variety of trees apart from mangrove. An iron farm that's been going since the very first episode. Villages that I can get things like bricks, stone, glass, decorations like bookshelves and other things from. And an amazing piglin bartering setup that's fed from my gold farm. Not to mention the Froglight Farm, the Guardian Farm, and the most amazing copper farm in the end. But there's always one resource that is an absolute nightmare to get hold of. It really is terrible. And that is all of the huge amounts of deep slate that I go through in these builds. And it is just really miserable every time I have to go down to the mines, even with a beacon, to try and get hold of this. 
However, I saw the other day an amazing new machine from a YouTuber called Borken, and this is a tunnel boring machine that can be used to then blow up the deep slate and just collect it. And this is gonna revolutionize things. But I need to get myself some more ancient debris in order to get this built. And the next stage of that is in these boxes. So I have crafted up a whole bunch of TNT here. I have also got, as you can see in my inventory, a potion of fire resistance and an entire crate full. So I came to the bartering setup, got these ones and just basically added some redstone to increase the time. So I am now good to go. I need to collect these up and find myself somewhere that is gonna be suitable. A short elytra flight later. I'm digging out some tunnels ready to place some TNT and I've already just through this uncovered the first of the ancient debris. So let's see if there's any more around here. There is, fantastic. Uh, so that looks like it is two down. Just blast out some more space around here. No, nope, that's it. Two down. I only really need four, but let's see how many I can get. And from the first explosions, I have got, by the looks of it, at least another three ancient debris. So only a few more to go, but I might just carry on. And for this absolutely epic tunnel, I managed to get myself 16 more ancient debris. And all in all, that gives me 42, which is far more than the sixth I actually needed. So I've got a nice supply in case I need to put some netherite on anything or replace any tools. Now I've brought all of the debris and all of the other redstone components that I'm gonna need down to deep slate level. So we're minus 32 at this point. I want it to go above where the lava is gonna form for doing this and I've had to dig out a lovely big area and this even on its own even with a beacon was painful so I'm super super excited to get this built this is where the machine is going to go so now it's time for me to get building the machine's now complete hopefully the TNT dupers are all fine this should have all the right kind of pistons so we've got sticky piston here here and these two sides which are the bits that pull things along and fingers crossed, if I just hit this, brilliant. Now I just run around and collect all of the deep slate. Perfect. A little bit of blasting later. I love using this thing and as you can see, I have been using it a fair bit. And in this time, I've not only got an inventory full of cobbled deep slate, but I've got no fewer than eight shulker boxes that I've managed to fill up so this will keep me going for quite some time also some other bits and pieces because of the tough and various other ores and diamonds and things that you get from this I did have one slight issue with this which was um, firstly I came into a cave so I've had to patch that up but also when you are blasting if you do use this and again check the link in the description to see how to build this if you do have gravel that falls sometimes you can blow up a block and then have the gravel that falls which will then mean that if you do start the machine again this will hit its push limit and will not move forward which can then cause the tnt to glitch out and blow up the whole thing so i did have that once have had to rebuild this but luckily it doesn't take very long to rebuild at all so it's an absolutely fantastic machine and you can also do a four tnt duper version of this which all sets off at the same time so it doesn't blow up any of the items that you get dropped so yeah really really enjoying this did also try to set myself up a another portal in order to link this section up but it was too close to the nether portals that i have already in the base um in the village rather and because of that it wouldn't link up correctly because of the vertical distance so hopefully soon i will have got far enough away to be able to do a nether portal and link this up to the nether roof with everything else but now i've got to take these items back to the storage system and get them all loaded into that after some chest emptying all the deep slate and the other blocks are now in the storage system as you can see I've got plenty in reserve to go alongside all of the other resources that I've got uh, I do need some more 
dirt and some more grass at some point and a little bit more sand although I have got plenty of red sand so that's all good but I've done a whole bunch of cleaning in here as well and cleared out those chests that I dumped the stuff off in and finished filling up the storage system so all of the miscellaneous items are in these chests and these ones down here and I've put some things in the filters upstairs. We've got all of the wools, so it's nice and colorful around here with a couple of the other blocks that I have lots of um, just down here as well. It does mean that I've got eight bays still ready to fill up with whatever I fancy before we get down to this overflow. So really, really pleased with that. And now that's all done, everything is in the right place to start collecting for the builds upstairs. A little bit of crafting later. I've gathered up all the resources that I'm gonna need in all of these shulker boxes along here, ready to go. And now it's time for a bit of a building time-lapse. The first of the new builds in this area is now complete and I love how this looks. I've also done a little bit of decoration and added some things like this ice and these honey lights down the sides and a bit of amethyst down the other side. And this connects up to the storage building using this honey pipe here. So if we have a look inside, we go upstairs first of all, there's just some decorative elements, a couple of machines here, the honey being pumped through into the big chimney units. And then coming down here, you've got this big tank on the side and also this slime pipe coming up from underneath. But here we have the functional bit of this build. This is an automatic propagule farm. By using some of the mechanics designed by Il Mango, I have created my own take on this. You put the bone meal in here. There's actually a skulk sensor in the back that registers the sound change. And then once the propagule has grown, the pistons will fire and the propagules will come down here. So this is a fully automatic farm to give me all of the propagules that I'll need for building any new mangrove trees, or should I say growing any mangrove trees. So yeah, really, really pleased how this goes. It's not the most efficient machine, but given what it needs to do, which is provide a reasonable number of these propagules, I think it does the trick. And here we have a connection down to the base as well, if we drop down here. So this just takes us out in the back of the storage area and into our little sleeping area. So there's some quick speedy access through these different mechanisms, brings us back up here and we can come out on the dock side. And over in this section here is where the next build is gonna go. And this one's gonna be a little bit special because it's gonna span these two sides. I'm gonna collect up some materials and then get building. I've tidied up the cliff side here and got all of the things that I need to start this build in my inventory with the rest of them being over here in my lovely chest monster. It's only temporary though, so it'll go back into the storage soon. However, now it's time to get this next structure built and I think it's time because you guys seem to love them so much for another building time lapse. The next build in this area is now done. We've got this awesome tower and factory with this water wheel and this really, really cool steampunk windmill. So let's check out the details inside if I head over here and uh, get away from these dudes who've been watching me intently. We've got some of this awesome blue flame going on in here with some machinery going up to the ceiling. Down here, we've got the workings of the water wheel, which connects up to the windmill up the top. And if we go right the way up first and foremost to the top level, we've got this cool machinery going on here with some redstone and some copper right the way in the top. and. This is going to be some nice views to the area that we're going to expand onto and you can just get a lovely view of the actual roof uh, and the chimneys. I really like the chimneys from the previous build that I just did on that really, really industrial. But that's not all that's going on here as with the other builds in the area. If we come down here, there is a functional element and this is a glow lichen farm. It's a really, really simple design. What you do is you take your shears and you shear this, and then it uses the double pulse from the observer to pull the observer down to power the bone meal. So you do that and you just get an endless supply of glow lichen. But then again, if we come across here, we can see these guys still, still lurking around. 
And there's one more thing that needs to be done in this area, not including killing off these raiders. Uh, and that is this water wheel at the moment is sitting out of the water. So we need something in this area that is going to allow us to power the water wheel so that we can use both the wind and some water power. So that's going to be the next thing, which is going to be just over here. And if I spin around like this, and as you can see, we now have a solution to the water problem. So we've got this brand new flask that sits up here, filled with water and is feeding down into this channel in order to power our water wheel. So this finishes off the story for this. We've got the ability to power this from the wind and also from the water to make sure that we can always get this machinery powered. And this sits on this gantry and is held up here. And if we head across to the other side, from this side, we can see that we've got this little tap that takes the water out of this jar and we've got the little bung in the top, but we've also got the different colors of stained glass coming into this just to give it a little bit more interest. So it's not just all one plain color. I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. We've also got a lovely little crane going on, much, much like the crane that we've got just around the corner there in order to be able to pick stuff up from this side of the dock and bring it up here because obviously we've got a slightly higher section here. So I really like how this has all turned out with the different levels as well. So it's not just all on one level as quite a lot of the builds are here, but it's adding a bit more vertical height. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Also, if there's any farms that you'd like to see as well, always like to hear about those. Hello there and welcome to Adicraft. Today, I'm doing a huge terraforming project in the Mesa, a brand new farm and a fresh expansion area to our steampunk town. So sit down, relax, and let's get on with my biggest episode to date. First of all, later on, I'm going to need some villagers. So it's time to head over to our villager breeder to see how many we've got stored up. As we come in here, you can see that some of these villagers that I have used previously to get the trade for Rotten Flesh have actually reverted back to a lower tier of trade. So all of the ones on this side have still got to be reconverted. I've got all of my conversion set up in here. And these ones I have been off camera doing some reconverting to actually get us back down to the one rotten flesh trade, just so we can have a nice supply of emeralds going on. But also realize that we can actually sell these guys gold ingots. So using the massively overpowered gold farm from the nether, we've got another mechanism to get loads and loads of emeralds rules here but if we go up this way we have the villager breeder itself and that is just up here and i think i need to give these guys a little bit of food head up here and just spam all the carrots over towards them and hopefully that will be good enough to get them breeding again are you happy have you got everything that you need do you need anything else no in which case i will let you do it um and fingers crossed they'll start breeding it does actually that being said look like i've got quite a lot of villagers in here no idea how many but um yeah rather a few so hopefully that should be enough to get going with the project later on and the first stage of that project will be getting rid of and just generally changing a whole bunch of this area here. So if we head up this way, a lot of this is going to unfortunately have to move. So I'm going to need to set up a beacon or two around the edge here to make sure that I've got the mining effects and get that all cleared out. But before I do that, I realized that I actually want to take a couple of maps of this area. So first thing I need to do is actually find where we put the maps that we did before. No, 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 no. Rare items, it must be. Nope, but there's some empty maps. This is the downside for using so many barrels as decoration. No, 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 no. Finally, there they are. Now to get these laid out to see what we've got so far. Hello Kitty, you still need a name, so I need the people to give me some ideas in the comments. So I've laid these out just by our super smelter here, and as we can see, this was where we started the first bit in episode one. This was when we built our starter house just over there, and this was when we built our first factory, but there isn't anything after that. So this super smelter hasn't even been built, which was in episode three, which means that all of this progress hasn't been captured, and we are definitely definitely past due making some more maps and now i've created those and also made sure to lock them never forget to lock your maps we can see how much more we've done since this 
end of episode two. So we've obviously come on, built this super smelter, which uh, is a little bit of a stealth building, what with the roof color and everything here. But the rest of the buildings, they all stick out. Here's the amethystine tree. Here's our funicular railway going up the cliff, just down there. And here is our boatyard and our temple of the clerics. So yeah, loads and loads has gone on. And it's this way we're going to need to go into even more maps for what I've got planned for this episode. But now it's time for a space clearing time lapse. So the main bit of the digging is now complete and I've just filled in all of the holes. There are a bunch of holes and some caves that I broke through too. Over here, one big one over here that went down and through. And down there, there's a massive cave system under there. So I had to do a little bit of lighting up. But most of that is now all dug out and the terracotta uh, has all been stored in the shulker boxes here, ready to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pave this area. I'm gonna have some buildings going around the sides here. And the roadway is going to come through along this way and come up to this point where it's going to be a bridge over. And then there's going to be a tunnel I'm going to build in the future through that section. And this waterway is going to go through here to a water tunnel that is going through this section here. So that's all ready to go. I've started collecting some of the stone and other resources that I'll need in these shulker boxes and chests. Now it's just a case of getting that ready. Much stone placement later, you can see that this is now finished. I've lit all the area up. I finished all of the walls and the pathway coming through with the road that's gonna connect up to the bridge here. I've left this dry for now because I've got some other builds and things to go around this side. But yeah, really, really like how this area is, but this is only scratching the surface as I am gonna be building a huge terraforming project here. I'm going to be building an absolutely massive mesa cave that's going to be underneath here, supported on some huge mesa pillars here with a big plateau on top. So I'm going to be embracing the double layer. So there's going to be some stuff under here and some stuff in the future on top. But the first stage will be to get this done. However, I'm not going to do that quite yet as I've got something else that I want to do. First of all, I've got to go back to the storage system and collect some redstone resources as I've been looking for a way to get hold of some moss and also some more bone meal for my tree farm over at the village. And I found a brilliant all-in-one bone meal and moss generator by a YouTuber named Chapman. I will post all of the details in the description, of course. So now to collect the resources and get over there ready to build. And here we are back at the village, which has turned into the industrial district really for this place to actually start the build. And it's really simple. Everything that we need is going to be in these two chests. And I'm going to be using my now completely defunct copper aging space because of course we've got the automated solution, which is much, much more effective over at the steampunk area. And I might move some of these builds over to the steampunk area eventually once I've got the space to do so. But for now, this is a brilliant place for me to set up this design. So I am going to go and get building. And the moss farm's now complete and I'm really, really pleased with the result. So there's some moss under there that gets bone meal, which turns the stone into moss. These pistons then push that across and crunch it, which drops it into all of these hoppers. Half of them go into these composters, so it's self-sustaining with the bone meal coming through here and then feeding back up into the system so it keeps running forever with a little bit of extra, any overflow coming down into here. And then the rest of the moss and moss carpet and the azalea trees all go into these chests here. And this has been running for about 30 minutes or so, so it's really, really quick to fill these up. I now have as much moss as I can possibly need. And having it over here in the industrial area by the village has been great because it's meant that my iron farm over here has been working away, pumping out iron. And I've been over here using the wood farm to get myself some more wood as well for some of the future builds. So really, really productive over here. At some point, I probably will move some of these farms over to the steampunk area, but at the moment, it's just a very, very short trip through the nether to get over here. But yeah, really, really pleased with this. Need to take some of this moss and the rest of the items back over to the steampunk area. And as I mentioned before, this is a design by Chapman. There will be a link in the description, so do make sure you check it out. 
and back over at the new area my inventory is now fully prepped for the building of this cave stroke mountain stroke plateau that's going to be coming up all the way over here so this is going to be a big build and i think it's best to show you in the form of a time lapse And we're done and that took significantly longer than i was expecting that has taken probably eight hours just of building on this alone uh, and that's with having everything having been designed in creative before just to get some of the shapes although i'll probably fiddle with the shapes here and curve off some of these edges make things a bit more organic but overall i'm really really pleased with how this has turned out we've ended up having four big pillars we've got one big pillar here We've got a smaller one here and one here with a little tunnel going through. And this is going to make some really interesting shapes to build in with, especially the stuff that's going to go around this area. Uh, I did have some incidents with some creepers, so I've had to stick a couple of sea lanterns around. But there is going to be some lighting, as you're going to see shortly, that I'm going to put in here, which I think is a really, really great design. But this is just what it looks like from here, the road approaching. So I really, really like this aspect. It gives a lot of depth with that in the distance and just this whole cliff. But if we fly upwards up here, we can see the top. This is just a really a, a bit of a temporary top. I wanted to put some stuff on here, but there are going to be builds up here eventually. So this is just to make things fit in. But from up here, you get the most amazing view that we have of our steampunk town. You really, really get a funky view here of this big gourd there feeding into the water wheel and the amethystine tree and the yeah the funicular railway coming up here as well just really really pleased with it all round next step for this will be to start working on the bit underneath so if i come down here again i have the bridge that i want to connect up I also have probably the first thing that I'm going to do is the lighting so that I can get rid of these sea lanterns. After falling off the scaffolding a couple of times, I've added the first of the lights and this is the chunky design that I'm going to be using. So using the grindstones, they make an absolutely brilliant big chain coming down and that's going to be connected using some of the frog lights and just some of the polished deep slate. So really like how these are. They don't supply that much light to the ground. So I still need to have a solution down here like these hidden lights here to make sure that everything is fully visible and spawn proof but they do make the whole area look brilliant so i've marked these out now in various different places where i'm going to have them and they're going to be different heights and now i'm just going to get those all built in a little while later all of the hanging lanterns are now in place and i really like the depth and the way that this adds to the area just with all of these around at the moment they do look a little bit out of place just because we haven't got any of the builds in but as soon as we start getting the builds in and the bridge going across which is going to be the next job then it's going to make a big difference to this i've also done a fair bit of lighting up all the way around and especially up here this is probably mostly temporary up here in this space just because in the future episodes i'm going to be building stuff up here anyway so that's going to take up some of the ground and we're going to have the natural light coming from the buildings. But if you're interested to see what I'm going to be building in the next episodes, make sure you do hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. But now I've just got to collect some of the resources together and build the bridge across to connect things up. A few moments later. And I've started doing some of the decorating and built out the bridge. So this has got a very similar design with the wither skulls on top of it to what we have over in these areas, which I think really just ties the whole area together, having that consistency coming through. I've also put a giant lava vat, which is going to be connected from the ceiling here with a pipe of lava running down. That adds a little bit more light to the area, but will also feed into a building that we've got down here as will this 
little pump. So I've built this pump and you can see the bubbles because of the soul sand inside to bring some water up to that same building, which is going to be connected through this little pathway that comes down as it was a bit of a blank area around here i wanted to bring us down to the water level and once we get here you can see that the water level has been added so i've gone through with buckets and filled all of this in which again i think i've probably left some little gaps with the water but as long as i don't i'm not going to be swimming in here too much it's ma mainly just the aesthetics so i've come through with a lo load of bone meal as well and added myself in some corals just in this particular section just because when you're inside here in the base you can see out and it looks a lot nicer and it's been lit up with a lot more of the sea pickles and things i realized that i hadn't actually taken the bone milling which i'd done on that particular area from last episode um, i've extended that all the way down through the canal pretty much to the tunnel that goes along and i think it looks a lot better it did take a little while but it's all for the aesthetics of this place. It just looks nicer now. As you go past, it looked a little bit blank before. So big progress made on this area. And now I've got to put away a lot of these resources because we've just got a whole bunch of nonsense in some of these boxes from where I've been mining out and building. And I've got to start collecting the resources for the actual builds themselves that are going to start coming in this area itself. All the resources have now been collected and I have them ready to go here in all of these different boxes. Lots of different bits and pieces to go for the different builds that I've got in this area here. I've also cleared some of the space that I'm going to need because some of these are going to be built into the surrounding cliff that we've just built today. So the next thing is for a time lapse. And with a little bit of the decoration done, this area looks so much better. I'm really, really pleased with this. So we've got the four builds, as I mentioned, this is the first of them. And I love this texture combination. So this is the brown mushroom block. And then we've got the mud and the mud bricks. And this looks so much like a plastered version of this. You could actually reverse these textures as well and have it so the main bit was in brown mushroom on a building. And then it looked like there were some bits that had worn away if you wanted a worn look. I've got mine the other way around and also liking the nice colourful roof with the combination of the acacia and the prismarine in here. But this building is here to perform a winching duty to actually use this little winch that we have down here to pull things up from the canal area to this section. But from a practical standpoint, this is my little sleeping area. So we've got this nice uh, bed area here if I need to sleep and it's getting dark in this section and all the machinery really like this machinery big industrial machines to power the whole thing now coming on to the next build if we head over this way we can see that in here we have absolutely nothing so this build here at the moment is just a casing as is this one over here as well so if we have a look inside these ones are builds that i'm going to be filling up in the next episode so look out for those i have got a bit of an idea one of which being i need somewhere to put the maps and we're going to be doing a mapping exercise at the end of the episode to bring us up to date on this so uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a big map room in here but we do already have some water and then some lava coming into this machine and this one at an angle so these angle builds are always a little bit more difficult to do interiors on but i'm sure i'll come up with something and then the main event for today the thing that we need the villagers for this is going to be where our stone masons live so i've got a whole bunch of stone cutters ready so that i can go and start preparing those again we've got this huge furnace going on that's cooking stuff off maybe to sort of cook the the stones or things and we've got six pods that are down here loads of barrels and lots of storage as well so that we can put all the things that we need to trade and the things that we have traded and then the theme continues where we've got some glazed terracotta up here with some more barrels and there's another six two here two here and two in that corner so we've got 12 between these two floors and then we've got this lovely furnace carrying on and upstairs we have the final four pods 
So we're going to have a total of 16 stonemasons in here, which should give us all of the quartz and all of the um, brick mainly. So a load of these builds are going to continue to use brick. Uh, which that's the best way to get hold of it. So really like how this is done. Obviously I ne now need to, whilst all of the materials are going back into the storage system over there, uh, I need to go and start breeding up and also zombifying all of the um, the different stonemasons and get myself what is going to probably be a very, very janky looking dirt path with rails to get the actual stonemasons over here once they've been converted. But before we get on to that conversion process and getting that all built, I just wanted to show you that I've actually connected this section of the base up to the nether as well. So we had this little tunnel going into the a cliff there was nothing attached to it at the moment so i figured i might as well stick another portal in there it's a good way to keep it out of the way um but also mean that i don't have to fly all the way over to my nether portals over there and in the storage room so i'll probably end up hiding some more nether portals around the place but that's all connected up inside the nether and here we are with our villagers ready to head up and get some converted and the railway line is now done all the way over to our new mason's home right the way from our villager breeder over here and I've tried to use where possible the existing levers and the land that we've already built up so this bit here coming through it just connects up um, and I might actually leave some of that railway line there because and maybe even make a slightly more permanent one because I could quite easily come down here underneath and bring the guys out just down here or something and send them up and through um, but I'll think about that off camera as we are now in the process of getting these guys up to the master rank and also just getting their trades locked in for whatever we need. So I've brought some emeralds over, get this guy to the next level. Uh, here we go. And then we'll send him on his merry way and bring the next guy back and start the process all over again. And the last of our stone masons is with one little nudge now in place and all i need to do is give him his little workstation and he will be happy alongside all of his other friends so now i have uh, some clearing up to do to get rid of this horrible dirt track and uh, then it's time to do some mapping out And now that I've mapped this out and locked it, if we look at a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see this quite jarring line here where the map stopped before, where we had our nice big uh, gourd there feeding into our water mill. But now you can see how much we've achieved with this lovely bright colorful roof of the building that we've got there that picks up the stuff from the canal and then the other building here. But most of all, I love how this plateau looks. I think this has come out really, really well and just shows that it's a massive area that this covers uh, and all the stuff underneath it as well. I love the sight line of this as we run across here. We'd already created a sight line through all of the things with the crane in front and the depth as you move through this way. But I think that this adds a brilliant element to the base, an element of verticality and an element of depth there. And some of you will have already noticed I've added some steampunk pipes containing some of the slime going throughout this as well, just to give that extra element of depth. And overall, I think this is probably my favorite area and my favorite build that I've done in the series so far. But do let me know what you think in the comments. If you've got any ideas for what we can put in these two buildings, please do let me know. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss any future videos. Hello there and welcome to Adycraft. I'm building a huge steampunk town in Minecraft and today I have by far my biggest update yet with a massive terraforming project to set up probably the most detailed build I've ever made. Later on I'll be telling you how you can download this world. I guarantee this is one episode you will not want to miss. So get comfy, relax and enjoy as we carry on with AD's adventure. We left last episode having created this whole new cliff and cave area, but one of the things wasn't finished. And that was these two buildings here, which are currently just basically fascias. There's nothing inside those, so I've got to dig these out after we built our mason hall over here. 
and after we built our winch system here to bring things up from the waterway. But I've got some fantastic ideas for these two buildings. So first of all, I've got to get these dug out. A few moments later. And the first stage is now done. So I've added in some floor and some walls and dug out all of the extra terracotta that was in here. So this one's only going to be a relatively small build. And if we come through, we've got a much bigger build for this diagonal one. I've decided to use some of the hollow space that we had in the mountain that we built in the last episode. So that one goes back into the cliff. Also means that it isn't all on a diagonal, which makes it a little bit easier to fill. So now I've just got that job to actually decorate the inside of these. Much decorating later. And the interiors for these are now done. And here we have an amethyst powered stone generator. It's not actually a working stone generator, but the idea is the lava comes in the top and the water comes in the side, the stone comes out here. Lots of nice details around and lots of piled up stone here, which went with the gray aesthetic. I wanted something that looked quite gray in here to match what it was used for. And I've also got a new texture pack that I got from Vanilla Tweaks that adds some 3D effects to some of the blocks, like these chains and the stone cutter. And we'll see some bookshelves in there as well in a second. And moving into this room, this is something I'm really proud of. This is our map area and what we have here is based on a Victorian printing press and it pulls the different papers in to create the maps and then stored on the walls we've obviously got boxes of paper that have been manufactured in here but down here we've got a big active map this one hasn't been locked with all of the area both that we've created and that we can expand into so a huge area there and then all of the maps that we've got over here we've got the first two episodes and then the ones that we created last episode with plenty of expansion room. But now that that is all done, I need to go and sleep first of all, but then get loads of resources from the storage area because I'm going to start on the terraforming. And although if we fly up, this is a really, really, really big area that we've got up here, it's not quite big enough. So I'm going to be expanding it all the way around here. So I'm going to fill up my inventory and it's time now for a time lapse. Thousands of terracotta blocks and many, many hours later, it is now done. I really love how this looks with the new section down here and this whole chunk coming across. Um, one of the things I've tried to focus on is making sure that I've got lots of different levels. So once I start decorating and building on this, I think it's gonna look amazing. I've also now got enough space for the huge build that we've got coming up later on in the episode on top here. And also all of these little cut throughs. So if I fly through here, this would also make quite a cool little elytra course as you come through around this corner and then you can come back on yourself through this one and like blast up through here and then potentially even go through here try and avoid the lights and you get through to the actual main base itself so yeah I absolutely love how this looks it's going to look even better once I get that build done before I do get that build done and start thinking about the next stage of that though I did find that I was hitting a bit of a problem whilst I was making this build and that was that I have almost entirely run out of shelter boxes. So I had to keep going back and forth and back and forth, shuttling things there, where if I'd had more shelter boxes, I could have just done it in one trip. And I am gonna head over to the end, and whilst I'm there, I'll probably convert some beacons as well. But the main reason that I'm going there is to do a little bit of end raiding. And here I am back in the end. So I've only got one of these portals open, and I need to try and work out which way to get to the end cities once i've gone up this way but at some point i do need to kill the ender dragon a few more times to get more of these i'd probably like to open all of them up and then i can actually think about doing something with the end itself but at the moment i'm using it for farms so we'll see um but through we go and on to the raiding Much end raiding later. Having finished with that city, it's time to go back and see how many shulkers I've got. A couple of end-based chores on the way and I've organized all of the loot. So I've got the usual stuff, 
just the armor and the various different things. But the main stuff I've got is nearly three stacks of shulker shells, quite a few diamonds, a bit of gold, and just the usual gubbins. But this was really the key thing that I was looking for. All of those shulker shells should give me enough shulker boxes to last me a long, long time. As you'll see, I am down to what is now a pitiful 10 levels, and that isn't because I've died, it's because I've been combining and manufacturing a whole box of spare weapons just in case anything would happen to me. And I've put them here in this box that I'm clearly absolutely never going to forget about. Yeah, I'm totally going to forget about it so that I can use them whenever I need. But the next thing that I need to do is actually back in the end. I need to go and do a little bit of AFKing at my copper farm uh, because I've been aging some of it up but realised that I do need a lot more copper and uh, that will actually also help with the levels. And here we are over at the farm. For those of you who haven't seen this it doesn't look like much but my goodness it is incredible and this is ENXO4's drowned farm and it works on zombie reinforcement so I'm going to head down into my little safety hole make sure that I close this and then get everything ready and start this thing going so I can get myself some more copper and some more levels after a couple of hours, I have got these three chests first full of copper ingots, plus a, another half a stack of copper blocks as well. At one point, I did make a bit of a boo-boo. There is one sword that you use and you hit the armor stand with that keeps the farm going and restocks it with zombie reinforcements and another one to kill some of the zombie overflow once you have got to a point where it starts to lag and I'd selected the wrong sword so I killed every drowned in there. Luckily for me I did have a couple of spare ones but I will need to get some more spares at some point in case I make the same mistake again but now I do have all of the copper that I'll need for this build project so that is perfect. And with some of those blocks aging away in the copper aging facility, I need to do one more thing before I start collecting the rest of the resources. And that is take some copies of these master maps now that I've updated them with the new terrain, because this is the last time that we'll be able to see the top of this before I put the build on it. And I want to capture the progress that we've been making throughout the course of this episode, because I think that this looks epic. And with the side-by-side -side comparison of the terraforming to create the plateau in the first place last episode, to this episode you can see the massive expansion that has been made and this looks brilliant and gives all the space that I'm going to need for the new build and in a minute I need to start collecting together the resources but before that I need to add in some signs so that we can see when the progress has been made throughout the course of the series and that becomes extra important because I'm going to be releasing a world download for the first time ever of this steampunk world and that is going to be available to all tiers of my patrons so if you're interested in getting hold of this world then do check out the link in the description and see if there is a tier that suits you but now to collect the resources and here we have this chest monster that is filled with all of the different resources that I'm going to be needing for this first stage of the build and very much the best way for you to see this will be in the form of a time lapse. And with that huge endeavor now done, you can see the results of what is in essence, basically a mega project that I'm just doing in a single episode. And the scale of it is really quite phenomenal. I've had to come up an entire stack of scaffolding just to be able to give you the perspective to see it all. And as you can see how it compares just to the rest of the base, given that this is 10 episodes worth of progress here, just to create this so far in this episode has been a huge piece of work. Um, but I'm really pleased with how it's going so far. So obviously we've got this massive steampunk gear that sits here on top of the Mesa Plateau that we've been building. The law behind this, bearing in mind of, of course that it is Minecraft, so it's the suspension of disbelief, is the build that I'm going to put on here, which is in itself an absolutely huge build is going to be able to be turned by these different machines. We've got this huge generator here. I'm really, really pleased with this. Um, generating some charge there in the middle from the electrical difference. And this is based actually on a Victorian design, um, which I've, of course, given my own my own twist to and, and my own colour scheme. And uh, yeah, made it a bit more steampunky. 
Coming over this way, we've got a giant sump of the honey that's feeding up into this boiler. And you can't see it from this side, but on the far side there, there is a window and you can see the flames going. Goes into one of the transformers here that feeds into this machine again. And coming down here, there's another transformer that then goes into this, which is the, the thing that is actually turning and powering the whole shebang. So really, really pleased with this. When you're underneath, you can just see how massive this is as well. And I love like the different layers, the fact that you can stand here and look up at all the detail in this. And I've done a lot of work to try and light this up as well, because otherwise it would be an absolute death trap. But one thing to say is this has been an absolutely huge endeavor. Basically, I could have done an entire episode just with the expansion of the plateau, could have done another episode just with the building of this cog, and I haven't even got to the main build yet. So if you are enjoying the episode, uh, please do leave a like, make sure that you do leave a comment as well, because that really, really does help with YouTube, and make sure that you share it. Let other people know if you've been enjoying this series, and also what you'd like to see in the future, and hit that subscribe button, because that all helps out the channel. And I really do appreciate Appreciate your feedback more than you realize it gives me the motivation that I need to tackle absolutely massive projects like this this project the design the resource collection and then the build which has taken hours and hours and hours has been weeks in the making and we haven't even got to as I say that big structure that's going on top of it yet any support that you give is much appreciated but now let's show how this connects up to the rest of the base if we come down here on these stairs there's just some decoration and this allows us again with each of the these stages I wanted to add a bit of verticality in so there's going to be different views that we can take out over the different areas of the base and then we come down another set of stairs and we can see down to beneath we'll get down there in a second uh, but going back up here the main way through is built into the cliff itself and we've got this lovely walkway and this matches up with the ones that we've built in the other areas of the base as well so keeping that consistent theme going on in terms of the design that we've been using when that comes down here and has got just again some decoration i will probably continue this potentially bringing it underneath through the middle of this conveyor belt i think that would be quite a nice touch to do but this goes up and connects up across and goes to a future expansion out this way and down there into the base which i'll show you in a sec but one thing that i did want to show you is there is another tunnel that comes off this to tie up the other section that brings us through just above all of the water here so you can see our waterway that's going to continue in a future episode you can see our roadway that's going to continue through this cliff in a future episode and i am going to do some little builds and some other things in all of these alcoves with lots of verticality and lots of different heights of things just to to make it look really interesting and just to give myself and you guys when you actually get the world download something to explore and maybe some little secrets in here as well i'm not sure exactly how what i'm going to do yet but you never know you probably should check some of these barrels because you won't know what you're going to find and i've connected that through as i said down to the main bit so there's a walkway now i did have to raise this up a block which in itself was a pain because getting the water out and then getting the water in when you're working with just trapdoors nightmare but it was worth it in the end because that ties the areas together there is now a flow right the way through from the base up the walkway here that then connects up through those different paths to the top and once we've got this roadway going through as well that's going to be another point of connection that's going to connect up to the same infrastructure and give us that ability to have multiple ways to get around because if this was a real town it wouldn't just be that single way that you could get through to something normally normally there are multiple ways and i've tried to do that here with the way that this is actually a big loop all the way around here as well so just keeping some of those themes going through and really really loving how that looks but one thing that i think i I do need to show you so I've added in some of this the signs now so you'll be able to tell what the different areas are but this is the map that I've taken and locked from having created the gear and that just shows you how big it is and there's so much copper that's gone into this it really really was scary I just had to keep going back and aging more copper just to have enough but yeah really really like how this looks in the end and just with some of the little details like the generator and just huge huge progress in the last couple of episodes and now i need to go and get some resources because the grind does not stop there is more to be done 
and one of the things that I've discovered is that I need to get some more amethyst because as you saw I've been using lots of it for decoration and there's loads of it in this build as well so I'm going back down to our amethyst mines not knowing that when I got down there I was in for a big surprise I have to say that I do absolutely love this little secret entrance here under this canal tunnel that goes from the sea and brings the canal into the base but as soon as you do get through this doorway it does turn janktastic i mean this definitely needs some improvement and at some point i'll come through here and probably clean this up certainly take all of the stuff out of the walls and just add in maybe some stone bricks and oh, diorite for a start but luckily this area is close enough to the base at least that the amethyst keeps budding just by me being around here so I've cleared out and can just clean these up whenever I like and I just need to come down here and get my tools my amethyst bud e pickaxe to get that but what, what what's going on here um obviously this was the place that we first found the amethystine so I've never particularly trusted this place but I'm not entirely sure what's going on here uh especially with these and if we head through hmm intriguing hmm what on earth is going on down here where where, where? more more amethystine lots and lots of amethystine and amethysts and even some skulk what what is good and there's another another geode down here with some more amethystine growing in it okay um interesting what what's what is all of this stuff and yeah not too sure what this is but i don't really trust it um, particularly with all of the amethystine around there and what happened after we planted that one bud uh, on something very similar in, in our base but yeah I don't quite know what this place is I think I am going to for now just leave well enough alone and go back to my amethyst harvesting uh, it's impressive I like it but I'm not quite sure why it's here oh dear uh, back up we go the less said about that, the better. After a successful but somewhat confused harvest, I've restocked my amethyst supplies, and this should keep me going for a little while, but now I need to think about other resources, as I need to take some of these shulker boxes and start collecting those that I will need for the final build. And this is going to take me some time, so wish me luck, and I will see you over in the prep area. 2,000 years later. With an inventory full of the resources that I'm going to need for the first layer of building and all of these shulker boxes absolutely rammed, it is now time to kick off the last time lapse of the episode. And the final build of the episode is now complete and as I walk through here you can see what I wanted which was this massive cathedral comes into view and it just gives that element of vertical interest when you're looking at the base itself you can see everything that's going on underneath and then you look up and you've got this massive massive cathedral on top and this took so long to design in creative and then literally about three days of building just to get this built in survival but really really was worth it in the end um, with details like these big rose windows and I've used a touch that good times with sky used in hermitcraft which is if you put honey blocks behind stained glass it really really makes the colors pop so that is a very very good tip to use when you're actually building something like this but if we fly up and have a look at it from the sky you can see the scale with these two big towers up at the front and all of the details going all the way around the side and then there's this big hole in the back here which is going to become more important in a future episode and looking at the interior I've 
done most of the decoration but not actually put the use the purpose into this build yet i'll be doing that next episode but i love these giant pillars holding everything up and this domed roof these little miniature domes to get them looking how i wanted with that element of depth as you walk through just took so long to design because when you are, are building something on a steve scale and not a, a scaled up version of things then getting the little details does take a long time and a lot of fiddling to make things look right whereas if you scale something up it's always a bit easier you've got a bit more room to actually play about but yeah i absolutely love the interior of this with the details like i say with the big two rose windows with the whole shape the ambience the colors everything in here at the moment there isn't anything apart from a little bed and a crafting table on my ender chest just down there but yeah super pleased with this let me know in the comments what you think of this build and uh, as i say you'll be able to see this yourselves if you get the world download for this world which i will be releasing after this episode but looking at this in the maps it looks absolutely amazing and when you zoom in you can see the colors of the roof and all of these flying buttresses going around and still the details of the cog coming around so in theory this whole build would be able to turn around on that cog you can see quite how much we've achieved in this episode coming through from before the episode where we just had the start of the plateau improving that and getting that bigger through to building the cog itself and now we have this cathedral which dominates the landscape and yeah couldn't be more happy Hello there and welcome to Adycraft. I've been building the most epic steampunk city in Minecraft for well over a year, with details, farms and lore along with huge and crazy builds. Today I'm creating another massive expansion with functional houses and an amazing new factory area. So relax and get yourself comfy for another awesome episode of AD's Adventure. Since we were last here, a couple of things have changed. Firstly, and most importantly, I have upgraded the world to 1.20. So we've now got access to all of the fantastic new blocks and items that have come through in the new update. I've also switched from Optifine to Iris and Sodium because there's better compatibility. I was getting loads and loads of crashes and things. So that is much, much better. And I've trimmed a whole bunch of the chunks for the world so that we can now go and we don't need to go quite so far in order to find things like the cherry blossom grove but as you can see by my distinct lack of armor because i've got a texture pack on that takes away the armor and makes it invisible i've got basically no interest whatsoever in the new armor trims it just isn't personally something that interests me at all i am normally facing this way and can't see any of it anyway so just so you know i won't be probably looking for that although i might pick some up along the way but as we look up at the cathedral we've got here from the last build i really really love how this has turned out and i've got some big ideas for this episode the first of which means that we're gonna have to go and start breeding some more villagers because whilst we've got some masons here and we've got our clerics over here one thing that i've been having to go back to the original starter village for is the librarians and i'm going to be building somewhere for them all to live so that means harvesting up a whole bunch of carrots through my micro farm and making sure that these guys are well fed perfect whilst they're breeding away it's time to tell you what the plans are for today's episode and the first thing that i'm going to be doing is creating a new tunnel that is going to be going through this cliff underneath our funicular railway and everything that we've got up here and coming out behind the plateau that we built and behind the cathedral and the road is going to be carrying up this hill with a factory at the top but here i'm going to create some housing for all of the librarians that we're going to be breeding up so that they can have their own specific places that we can go to trade with them that are going to look super super cool and now for the first but not the last time in this episode it's time to get digging After much digging, I have a big hole. I also have a very gray sky because with 120, they've changed the way that the weather cycling works. So it doesn't reset the rain counter when you sleep at night. And so if you did sleep at night before, you would find that you would almost never get any rain. But now as you can see from this horrible gray sky, yeah, that isn't working so much. When I was cutting through and building this, I did also make a little 
pathway that I'm going to fill in on this section here. I had to be very careful because I've got all the redstone for the ender portal going through here. And as you can see, it cuts very, very close to that with the colored lines from the wool where I've got the redstone going right the way up over the top. This is why you should always put your redstone on colored wool because you can't accidentally mine through it because you don't mine so quickly and it's easy to see. Also in this space, using the most of the space as we can see through to the amethystine tree, it's very close to the copper aging facility. So through on the other side of that brick, we have our copper aging and it really is just making the most of all of the space that we have in the base. And once I've added in the walls and everything here, I think it's gonna look really, really cool and make use of an area that would otherwise be inaccessible. So really, really pleased with that have left also a big space here and this is for something that is going to be very very useful in 120 uh, and i will show you that a bit later but first of all i need to now go and it's almost time for bed so get some sleep and get the resources together so i can start doing the walls and ceiling and floor to make this look a little bit neater and the tunnel itself is now complete and i've added in some extra pipes from these steam pipes and from the slime pipes going into the top to tie it all to the rest of the base and as you can see we've got some of the details in here already with some of these steampunk pipes going along here got a little walkway that we can come along and we've got some of these grindstones making a nice pattern in this wall and some other little bits of visual detailing in here this isn't a an area that is going to be used hugely i wouldn't expect uh, but it's nice to have some things that you can see when you are in here and one thing that I did realize is by using the skulk in here, I am running very low on this. So if any of you know of any good skulk farms, then I will probably need to build one next episode because I want to get some more of this. So please do let me know in the comments. Here is a nice big hole, and this is gonna be where I am going to be building another farm, which is gonna be a small flying machine based bamboo farm. So I've created a design just using some basic flying machines and some hopper clocks. So I've created the hole, but I haven't put this in yet. That will be the next task. And then if we come through here, we can see the road just comes through this way and we'll then continue up this hill. And this is where we're gonna have the buildings on either side. I've also added through now and completed this walkway. So this goes right next to our power station here for the funicular railway and gives easy access from this direction as well ready to come round here but i need to get my redstone resources now head back into the uh, into the tunnel itself and build myself up a bamboo farm a little bit of redstoning later and as you can see i've made some changes to the back of this tunnel and the first thing that i've done is to add a bit of contrast and make this stand out a bit more because it was just blending in too much i've added some of this striptication i think that that really pops with the skulk in the background and these grindstones and just some other little details just so this wasn't such a big flat space and that brings us to the main event which is this the bamboo farm now it's only a little bamboo farm for now that will passively keep going in the background but it is run by an, a couple of hopper clocks and this will if it grows all the way up because there's 32 bamboo here will actually farm us a stack and a half each time it goes and this will then pick everything up and supply it to us into this chest so it's been going a bit whilst i've been doing the building and all of this is a movable block so it's got some real nice decoration in the background and of course some amethystine there to help the bamboo grow because it gives off its obviously powerful rays but if we come in and have a look at the back we can see here that we've got a hopper clock that's got four stacks in and another one that's stacked on top of that that actually will go on a two move cycle uh, so every time this has gone twice this will fire off this connection so i think that this works out at about six and a half minutes which i'm not sure i might add or take out some items depending on how quickly this all grows and this goes through here and you can see we've got a little return station i've actually got a manual uh, start off on here as well so as you can see it heads off goes all the way down knocks the bamboo off goes to an auto return station and just comes back and this is just a real simple flying machine just a variation of what i've used in the copper farming as well so really pleased with how this is going and if i do need any more bamboo on top of this even though it gives a fair chunk i can always manually harvest it at the base 
But now the thing that I need to do is get the other main stuff that is coming from this update. And that is to find myself a cherry blossom grove. And I think I'm going to get some rockets and head off in this direction. And as we fly over the Guardian farm, I have chosen this direction because if you remember, this was where we went for the spruce trees and for all of the snow. So as far as I understand, the cherry blossom groves, they spawn near if not on top of the snow. So I'm thinking that given that I've trimmed all of these chunks, a little bit of lag there, um, then potentially if we just carry on this way, we will hopefully get to something that gives us those lovely, lovely pink petals. And would you believe it? Here we have our first cherry blossom tree. And I think I found the world's smallest cherry blossom biome. And oh, no, actually some more has spawned here. Even though this one here, the lonely cherry blossom tree, I think that this one needs to stay because this really, is this really a, a cherry blossom biome? Yes, yes, it appears to be cherry blossom grove. Fantastic. So at least now we can see the pink petals and this now this is the good stuff i absolutely love the colors that come through from this tree and the particles that it gives off from the leaves are just brilliant and when you combine that with these pink petals then it really is amazing this is one of the best additions to minecraft in my opinion for some time as a big fan of japanese builds particularly this is a total game changer but anyway i am gonna head around here if i can fly and take off and here we have what looks like a much much more substantial cherry blossom grove there's some ice spikes as well ah nice uh, but if we head down here i can start collecting some of the leaves and collecting some of this wood So I've done a good deal of deforestation, but I have made sure that I've been sustainable and replanted as many of these lovely, lovely cherry blossom trees as possible. And what are the fruits of our labor? Well, we've got nearly two thirds of a shulker box full of the logs and then loads of leaves, loads of these pink petals and the saplings. After a little bit of juggling with the sorting system, blocks are now in their rightful places. It has meant I've had to clear out some other spaces, so I'll need to work out what to put here at a later date. But I've also created here my working box with some more cherry logs, some more bamboo and some trapdoors for both ready to go into my ender chest. So I've got those available whenever I need them. So I'll plonk those in here quickly. And then the next thing to do is to head over here to the end of our tunnel and I now have to clear out some space for the builds that are going to be going here. Well, I've created an ugly big hole in the side of my terraforming that shows the back hidden bits of the other builds that we've got and a big dent over here, but that'll be fine. All of this will be covered up once I've got the resources from my base to start building these. The other good thing that's been happening is being over here, that's been activating my little bamboo farm. So that's been going strong and I've got a whole bunch more bamboo as well waiting in there for me. With the resources all collected up, it was time to get building. And as you'll see, the street is now complete and I've done some decoration, including adding another one of these little delivery vans coming through. This one's in a different color scheme. And this is using some of the blocks that we've got here, these new cherry blossom blocks, the cherry blossom wood specifically. And I absolutely love this. I've already started using this as a decorative block in various different places around the build, just because the color is just so gorgeous, especially when you put it next to something like the crying obsidian with the particles. So I really like how that has brought the area to life. But as you can see through the windows, we have got full interiors on all of these builds. And these were actually absolutely massive builds in the end. There's more than a full shulker box just of the bricks in these. And they took a very, very long time. Uh, but I am super pleased with them as well. So if we head into the first of these here, you'll get the general idea. So coming in, they are meant to be very crowded and claustrophobic, just little workers houses. As we come in here, we've got a little fireplace 
and some seating and they've got various different color schemes throughout but the main reason that these are here is going to be to house the librarians so they've all got the same kind of style with the lecterns here and with some of the uh, barrels above so that you can store the things i've also hidden things like ender chests around there but they're all connected up as well to make travel easy easy throughout and we've got things like a little toilet here and then we've got some more and there's various different numbers of them and they're not just in these areas when we go through again into the main house and come upstairs as well with more decoration we've got little bathrooms in there which again are connected through in between all the houses for easy transit we've got the little bedroom and also some more of these little librarian areas as well so yeah these are super super cute all the way inside and we've got nine houses with at least four librarians each now i don't actually know how many books you can get so it could be that there's actually more opportunity to get librarians than books and i can double up on some or just leave them in case they have future librarians that actually come out as well so they're all linked through as i said round here and then down to the end so really really pleased with how that has gone and also that we are really getting a serious backlog now of the bamboo just from this passively working again i've emptied this a couple of times as well whilst i've been doing this but yeah the fact that this just passively goes in the background is a great thing and now back over to the villager breeder because i have a lot of converting and a lot of lectern replacing to do and the first two i was lucky enough that i've actually managed to get looting so i want to uh, lock this guy in here by taking this trade boom and that's that one done and this guy's got sweeping edge so i really really don't want to miss out on this trade so again i will lock this in now and get these trades and get these guys cycled through a couple more times just to keep their trades as low as possible and i also need to see what this guy is uh, but i'm not going to do all of the villagers at this point because there's going to be an awful lot of them i just want to get some of the basic trades and then i've got to build myself the track across the ugly dirt track with the rails and actually get some of these people in place because that's not going to be easy in itself and i've now done all of the grind with regards to these villagers and basically this is only the villagers to fill the first two of nine houses so i'm gonna have to do a lot more but i have got all of the useful trades in here like sweeping edge and i've been looking through for various other things as well so efficiency five knockback all of the stuff that i would need mainly for tools which is the main thing that i would need to replace or get more of and i have got this very very janky nice dirt track because can you really call yourself a minecrafter if you don't take your villagers using a dirt track so we've got three bays here for example that i'm going to pop the guys in and uh, another two upstairs on this side and then there's six in the first house over there so yeah now i've just got to sleep because i don't want to be transferring these guys whilst it's dark and get these guys in place Well, surprisingly, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be and a lot quicker. So once I'd got that lovely dirt track in place, it was pretty simple to actually get these guys in because they were all in, in that room. It was just pushing them onto the tracks. So now I've done the thing that I didn't do before, which is put all of the books on some signs above their heads and i've got these barrels ready to fill up with the books themselves this guy himself is a little bit of a strange one because when i was going through this guy's got mending and directly beneath exactly the same mending trade and this happened not once but twice for me not with mending but with feather falling so i've got another villager over in the other house that's got feather falling four twice in a row so yeah strange one but I've started to get my villager trading set up in place. The rest of them, we've got some in here. So here we've got, I've tried to group them together a little bit as well. So these are the kind of the pickaxe things. So we've got silk truck, silk touch, silk touch, fortune, and unbreaking in here as well. And where I've got a top level enchantment as one of the other enchantments, then I've put that on here as well so yeah really really pleased with that um especially with how quick that was and the other ones over in this house but yeah lots more houses to fill up but it's time now that i've got those 
guys in place to actually do a little bit more building got to put a block there that I've missed but what I'm going to do is a little bit of clearing out on this area and then building up the last build for today which is going to be an absolutely epic new factory that's going to go here so I'll get clearing and get building and do that in the form of a time lapse a little decorating later and the build is now complete and as you can see, I've updated this on the map so we can see the street as it comes through and then goes into the cliff and this is the entrance. And the color scheme on this really, really adds itself to the area and it fills up what was before just a very, very blank space in our base. So really pleased with how this has gone. Uh, but now over to the build and I have created this little cut through which makes it super convenient to go from one side of the cliff through to the street itself. One other thing that I did was I shifted across the car, um, the van here, because it just looked a bit too crowded on this side against the edge. Uh, but up here, we've got the finished factory that's now fully decorated. And I've added some big cogs and machinery on the outside. This is just to stop it from sliding down the cliff. So this is some reinforcement. And these are like some big pneumatics to hold this in place. And I also really like the elevation that we've got going up to this. So the fact that you come up this cliff and you've got, got to go up again to get to the factory with its big gates and this huge courtyard here. I just, yeah, I like the two, the two factories next to each other. So we've got another big cog over here. On the side round here, we've got like a big furnace-y thing um, with some more gears. So this would tilt up and down. Not entirely sure why, but it does that. Uh, and then we come into the littler of the two factories. We've got this boiler. We've got some more detailing. Um, I need to actually wax these, that reminds me. Um, but yeah, we've got also some more machinery coming through here. Some more around the side here. And then coming into the practical side of things, we've got this. Now this is a really, really simple design by Raiseworks. This is just a little pink petal farm. So literally you bone meal it and then you switch it off and it picks up in a hopper and just puts it in this chest. So now that we've got them, we never need to run out of pink petals. But looking at the details here, you can see there's loads of detail in here with these two big furnaces and this machine that's running the two cogs in the side and then some more of the steampunk equipment here. So yeah, overall super pleased with how this looks and it gives some gorgeous views down here from this side of the cathedral from last episode too. So there's loads to explore and loads to see here and a new world download after this episode will be available to my patrons. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description and see if there's a tier that suits you and you can come on and explore and play on this world yourself. But above all else, I'd like to say thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed the episode, please do make sure you let me know in the comments what your favorite part is. Hello there and welcome to Adicraft. I'm approaching 6,000 days in my world and in that time I've created an epic steampunk town with factories, houses and even a huge cathedral. Today we take to the skies as no steampunk world would be complete without airships and I've got the mother of all zeppelins coming later. Alongside this there's some more farms I need and a special way to bring life to the area that you can be involved in too. So relax and enjoy as we delve into Adi's adventure. But first, I'm holding every egg that I own in my hands. Yes, I've managed to pick up a sum total of two eggs, but I'm going to need later on significantly more than this because I'm going to need a whole bunch of chickens. So what I've done is I've put together a little hatchery here where I can just make some, some chickens and hopefully I'll get some from these eggs. I've got one. I've got one, I can't even breed that. So I'm gonna need to go out and find myself some chickens in order to get some more eggs so I can start breeding these guys up and start collecting some things for later. And then this will passively just keep going whilst we do some other things around the base itself. Over at the village area, I have managed to get myself some seeds ready to go. And now I'm gonna head out and try and find some chickens. And luckily there's a big open space here. and I can already see a couple of these. So let's see if I can bring these guys together and hopefully breed them up. 
and then find some more and just get myself a little makeshift chicken farm going on just around here oh there's an egg as well i'll have that thank you very much now to look for some more and there we have it a hole full of chickens and i've got a few eggs in my inventory i'll take them back over to the steampunk area in a minute put them into the chicken breeder and start breeding them up and just letting them lay away to their little hearts content I'm ecstatic that they're eggshinned off now and I'm excited to get back to the regular building projects with an excellent new build. Egg. And the next project that we have is over on this side of the base so we can see here the amazing cathedral that I built up on its brilliant cog here but there's no way for us to get up this way and we've now got the street that comes here in the factory so we really need to be able to get up there and I'm going to be doing this with a cliff elevator that's going to be coming up the side here and I've also got an addition that's going to be very important to the side of the cathedral itself and the best way to show this will be in a short time lapse. The elevator is now complete and you can see that it comes up here and it goes down into the ground down there and can lift people right the way up so they can then get into the cathedral across this walkway that can lift off whenever the cathedral is spinning round. And you may have noticed my vantage point is actually in the first of the airships that I'm going to be building today. So this is one of the smaller designs that I've got coming across. And if I just step out on here, we can see the elevator in a bit more detail here. And you'll also notice that I have added in a component just above this. And there is a reason for that. If I drop down and zip across here and land here, or rather smash into the door, we can open this and we can see that there is a cable that comes right the way through. And here we have our airship. And what this will do is this will be able to dock here. So the logic of this is that we have this giant cathedral and the airship will be able to float and fly over and connect up to this at which point it will be on the cable and it will run through and be able to actually sit inside the cathedral enjoying whatever things are going on in here. So yeah, I really, really liked that design and the idea of just bringing something from the outside into the cathedral itself and super pleased with how that's turned out. So now that that is done, I will need to sleep. The other thing that I will need to do is I am going to head down here. I can show you where I'm going right the way through into our little road section and somewhere about here I am going to add another bit of usage to our area that we have so we've got obviously our little bamboo farm from last time and I'm going to be digging into this and digging down because one of the things that I'm running low on is glow squid ink and I am going to be building a glow squid ink farm but in order to do that I need an entrance and I need to get down to at least level 30 in order to build it below that sometime later after an awful lot of digging down I've got to the right level so level 20 this is basically where it's going to be I need to dig out a whole area here but whilst I was down here I had a horrible creeper friend and also found this spider spawner which is absolutely rubbish loot so nothing of real use here I've lit this up just in case I do want to come back to it at some point, but I really don't think I will. Now it's time to get on with some digging to clear out the space. The basic area is now all dug out and I have to clean up some of these edges because I don't really want anything apart from stone. The aim will be that I can actually have some of the tinted glass across here so we can see in even though it won't affect the spawning. So I need to now go build out and fill in some of these gaps and these holes that we've created and make sure that it's ready for the actual build itself. And with some tidying up done, I have collected up the resources that I'm gonna need 
and set out everything ready for the build itself and this is going to be a design by logical geek boy and i will of course put the link in the description to the original video the one thing that i have needed to do though is to change it so in his video he says that it needs to be beneath level 63 which is sea level they've changed the spawning mechanics now since this came out and it needs to be beneath level 30 so basically i've shifted it down so yeah make sure that you do that if you do follow the tutorial but it is an absolutely brilliant build and now to get on with it And using FreeCam, which I've installed this episode as well, I can come out of my body and you can see that the glow squid are spawning beautifully in here. So I have dropped this beneath level 30. I've also very specifically picked an area that there is very, very little uh, actual water about so that there wasn't too much impact on the spawning rates and I didn't need to go searching out all of the under underground water and lighting that up but if I do head back into my body up to my spawning position this is 32 blocks from the farm itself which means that the glow squid actually move around and it replenishes itself better and there's also a couple of other things about this farm and firstly that is that I've got this little viewing area so wherever you've got a, a hopper minecart going Going back and forth sometimes for some bizarre reason they do glitch out and the best way to actually be able to see this is by giving yourself a little viewing platform if you haven't had any resources for a while for example so i've just put this in place and it's just nice to see the hopper minecart going back and forth a little bit but that is using tinted glass as well as is this big viewing window because the whole thing does need to be in perfect darkness but all of the glow squid ink comes in here and we've got already for just a few minutes um we've already got nearly five stacks and that is great so i'll take some of these back to the storage system and this farm will also activate within 128 blocks so i can turn it off but i think i will passively leave this going whilst i step away from the farm back to the base itself and upwards to the next thing and that is going to be adding some extra life to my base so i absolutely love how this airship looks and that's going to be added to with more airships later on and how the vehicles look in this space but we do need a bit more life on the ground we've got the villagers in their different places but they don't go out much so I saw a fantastic mod on my friend Mr. Beardstone's video and that is called Straw Statues. And what it does is it's a little bit like the armor stand mod that they have on Hermitcraft, but in my opinion, slightly better. So if I place this guy down, you can see that it's a much more three dimensional character that we've got here and it gives them a default pose. Now, the best thing about this is with an empty hand, if I click like this, I can then adjust what this guy is doing and how he looks and all of these different elements, uh, move his leg a little bit like this or like so. And there's loads of different poses that you can pick that are the basic poses. And you can also pick things like the model parts and position, etc. And all of these different things you can actually apply some armor to them if you wanted um, but if i go in here and type mr beard stone for example you can actually import the skins of different people and players to these guys so now i can move his head around a little bit like this and he can be here looking at the building saying hello so i'm going to be placing more of these fantastic statues all over the base a little bit at a time at first but i'm definitely going to add some today and i've also got some of the names of people from my discord and some of the friends of the channel who i'm going to be popping around in various different locations to bring some life however if you would like to be included in these straw statues then you can pop along to the discord and let me know and i can get you added into the base itself and as i'm walking past you'll see these guys and potentially your own skin around in 80s adventure several statues later and i've had so much fun with these placements so as you can see i've used some of the people from the discord some hermits as well and some friends of the channel and here we've got the buttercups there just 
plotting whilst they have a look out of the lovely underwater window here and unfortunately it's going to involve redstone and eggs plenty of those around green we also have sand from my discord about to be run over by vintage beef i'm sure that beef hasn't done it deliberately but sand yeah you need to get out of the way i'm afraid we have gem piloting the submarine with impulse showing her the way and we've got pearl she can't keep away from the chests and then downstairs we come through to B-Dub just trying to pick out what book he wants to read next. And Iskal just chilling down here as well. And Zedaf is wondering if this sheep is looking at him. And actually this sheep isn't looking at anybody. So I'm still waiting for an update because I've gone to 120 for the fresh animations mod to actually bring them back. So I've got some really slightly weird sheep models at the moment. But at least it means the sheep is never looking at you, Zed. And my absolute favourite one of these for the life that it brings is Corrales being clumsy and falling off this barrel and blue nerd trying to help him out so i'm not going to go through them all because there's a lot yeah i had so much fun doing these things like ren dog being picked up and doc is operating the crane round here and slice lime just doing a bit of singing in the rain there as well so yeah this mod is just so cool and i'm going to continue to add more characters and more people into all of the different places as we go on so if you would like to be included pop along to the discord so you can give me your in-game name and yeah we'll be glad to add some more life to this area if you're enjoying this episode hit that like button and let's see if we can get this video to 250 likes but enough straw statue shenanigans for now the next thing that i need to do is to start thinking about clearing out the space for the next build and that is going to be the airship dock which is going to go about here and what i'm also going to do is connect that through to this walkway again trying to make sure that there's multiple ways to get between all of the different areas of the base so i am going to have to do some clearing out and some prep work in this area and that's why i've got my resources ready so it's time for another time lapse The groundwork for the airship dock is now complete and as we go past a mini chest monster I will need to get some more resources because I don't have enough there to actually do what I need to do but if we come through here we can see that this opens onto a beautiful view of the base with the storage area over here and also the smelter and you'll see some more of the little miniature airships and I've added these around to add a bit more vertical height and also these are great for in the law transporting some materials around so all of them have got these little winches that can be deployed from underneath and they can then move various different resources around because obviously we're going up and down a lot and although there's cranes around there's probably not enough cranes around to support all of the community here so having these little airships just as little tugs moving bits and pieces around is an absolutely great addition so I'm really really pleased with those I've now got four with the one that I built over there but I do have some bigger designs that will be coming with the airship dock but talking about resources there's one resource that I mentioned last time that I will need and that is because I'm down to my last 54 skulk blocks and that is the primary reason that we did the chicken work at the start of the episode I am going to be building a variation of Il Mango's chicken farm powered skulk farm and I am going to be building that if I fly down in this area that was never used so i added these doors uh, with a view to putting something under here and actually this is going to be the perfect location to keep this going whilst we do various other things around the base so the first order of business is going to be to hollow this out so i've got some space to actually start thinking about the build an awful lot of digging later i have a big big hole and this seems to have lined up just right so there's some things coming through from the ceiling which is the building just above and also we have here the edge of one of our beacons but there are going to be walls and obviously a floor which is going to be the next job if i just fly down here putting all of that in to make this look nice initially because this is going to be the basic space to put what is going to be quite a large contraption in so if i stand here and i go like this 
and the decoration of the walls and the flooring is now complete and this is quite a large space and like I said there's going to be quite a lot of redstone in here but before I actually can start building that I need to go and craft up a few more things in terms of redstone because I checked and I don't quite have enough but then I will build this up and show you how it works and the build's now complete and it looks quite complicated but actually it's not too bad when you look at all the different parts so down here we've got a stone generator that just pushes the stone through to be converted into skulk that happens when these chickens grow up they're standing on a daylight sensor so they're too short at the moment to actually hit the lava but as soon as they grow up they hit the lava activate the catalyst turning some of these blocks into skulk which then activates a note block and then powers the system to push the piston through and then this double piston extender will move them round and the chickens get here by this little chicken farm here so this is where they chill out and they will lay their eggs that will go through the hopper into this dispenser and this etho hopper clock will just power that dispenser every so often pumping a new egg into the chamber to potentially grow a chicken so passively this will keep restocking itself with eggs and as you can see it's been working away and it will bring the skulk along and then stack it all the way up so yeah I had to make some changes from the original Il Mango design so first of all there were some timings that needed to be different because I moved where this double piston extender was so I needed to make sure that it was working in time to bring these blocks out but the biggest change was in the original design this wasn't a daylight sensor this was actually a cauldron that was having the eggs dispensed into it and the chickens would be underneath the cauldron and then when they grew up they'd hit lava that was in the cauldron itself the problem with that was they must have changed the skulk mechanics and they weren't activating the skulk catalyst when they died and no skulk was being created and I found that the best block for that was the daylight sensor perfect height so that they're too short to hit the lava but it does allow the skulk and their death to transfer through into the catalyst itself so really really pleased with how this is going and hopefully in the background this will just be moving away and providing us with some extra skulk for the future I'm not going to decorate this today this this area this will be one for a future episode but all in all really really pleased with that and it is a great design by Il Mango in the first place watch his video because it shows how he creates all the different components so I'll link that in the description for you and make sure you check it out now back over to the build and I've created this chest monster and filled up my inventory with everything that I'm going to need for this airship dock and this is going to be quite a big build so I am going to kick it off in another time lapse And after a little bit of decoration, the airship dock is now complete. It's up and running. The first of the airships is docked up there. And I've been putting around some of the decorations like the skulk, because that farm has been running away in the background, as has the glow squid ink farm. So this has been really good for getting some of those resources. And if we come into the first building, we can see we've got a little ticket office here. So people can come in, get their book, have a, have a sit down whilst they're waiting for their airship to go. And we'll just hop over this barrier because I don't need a ticket. Um, don't tell anyone though. Uh, and we've got the first of the elements of this we've got two of the lifts that are very similar to the lifts that we've used to get up and down to the cathedral so just keeping things consistent here and then around here we've just got some more of the steampunk machinery but what you can also take is this spiral staircase so I've built this to go right the way around and as you go up this gives brilliant views of the base and we come up to the first level there's just some things ready to go on to little airships and we've got three gangplanks ready for airships to dock on this level including this little one so you can actually get a proper up close look at these smaller designs here now and you can see that they've got the winches here ready to pick up the materials and the things that they're carrying around like those i've still got to add some statues to this but i will do that probably off camera once i've got some more of your name so if you're interested in being in 80s adventure then give me your skin name and i will make sure that we get a straw statue for you but heading up to the next level we've just got two more gangplanks here heading up to the final level 
this is the main one so this is the one where the big airships would dock and this has got different color coded areas for waiting for your airship so you could be waiting for the cyan airship or the red one or the orange one here um, and if you come out here we've got much much bigger gangplanks place for people to pass and lookout zones and we've also got this really really nice storage area ready for preparation for airship loading and that will be done if i just go into free cam here by this crane that i've put onto the roof so this is a steam powered crane this will just allow the items to be picked up from the floor brought up here ready for the airships to dock themselves and then put onto the airships using again this crane so this will swing right the way around and be able to service both sides of that and there's also some machinery up here to make sure that there is some power for the lifts as well i'm really really pleased with how this looks i love the design it gives another element of height before this we had the cathedral which was really really tall and it just seemed to dwarf everything so this is almost a bit of a counterbalance to the cathedral nearly the same height but a very very different design if i go back into my body we can go across here and as i mentioned there is another one of these airship spaces and this is where today's final build is gonna go i'm gonna be putting two of the bigger airships in place and i think it's only fair that i show you the first of them with a time lapse And the build's now complete and I'm really, really happy with the outcome. I'm in my F4 camera now, just looking at this. And yeah, it was a bit of a pain to build, I'm not gonna lie, just because I kept falling off. And when you're building anything up in the air, then it's always a bit more difficult. But I just love how this looks with this big rocket motor on the back. And then we've got this fan blade to also help to power it along. And these diagonal fins, really, really like those. And alongside this one, I didn't time lapse it. But I also built another one over here in a slightly different colour scheme, but the same basic design and wanted to have this one a bit more active. So I've added on the trail behind it as that rocket motor is, is pushing it along. And so, yeah, super, super pleased with how these look. And coming back into my body, you will see that I've added a whole bunch more straw statues, both in here in the build itself and on the gangplank and towards the airship. So if you'd like to see yourself in AD's adventure, then please do let me know in the comments that would be great but yeah really really love how this is we've got the little steering and driving section here and then we've got some seating and then as we come through we've got a really really nice dome that is great for visibility of the base itself looking down to all the different areas and some little cushions as well there before you get to the motor now at the moment this thing is completely empty I don't know if I'm going to put anything in here. If you've got any ideas, please do let me know. I've caught the bug a little bit for these airships and I've got a bit of an idea in my head of a super size one. So equally, if you'd like to see that, please do let me know. An absolutely massive airship. Yeah, that's probably a challenge that I will take up at some point. Hello there and welcome to AD Craft. I'm building a massive steampunk city in survival Minecraft. With huge terraforming projects, crazy farms and detailed builds, I'm looking to create an immersive experience and push the boundaries of Minecraft. Today, I'm going to be building a huge airship to dominate the skies and expanding the base into an amethystine cave. So join me as we head deep into AD's adventure. But first, an update. In between episodes, I've actually been doing quite a lot of off-camera work this time. And the main reason for that has been to try and fill up my base with all of the librarian trades that I didn't have previously. And with these guys in their forever homes, I've got some of the less frequently used but still really useful trades in place here, ready to go. I've still got a couple more of the guys over at the Villager Breeder as well. And once these guys are over in the librarian area, the only things I'll need to get are Smite 5 and Bane of Arthropods, apart from the crossbow enchants, which I'm just simply not going to bother. But whilst I was over here at the Villager Breeder, I also got myself these guys who are here to help me deal with all of the 
pumpkins and the melons that I've been creating all the way through the season and I've got loads and loads of them dotted all over the place as well because yeah I had so many they were constantly overflowing so I've built this little area which is under here and if we go up here this is the original build and I've just taken the chests down through into this little area so I've got a proper sorting system now to split the two things out and most importantly I can trade to my heart's desire and get loads of emeralds with these guys who are also going to give me all the golden carrots I can possibly need so that was a little expansion that I did just through the quality of life because I got so so tired of emptying this constantly and another little quality of life thing that I did was over here at the chicken powered skulk farm and that's because I left this thing running and when I came back to it all of the blocks were all over the place basically the pistons had been pushing the blocks up and they'd gone right the way through the floor once it had actually filled up so I came back and just there was a line of blocks that had been pushed up into the pathway which wasn't ideal so I've put some immovable objects into the right places like a chest back there just to stop everything from getting squashed and that wasn't everything though if I show you through here I have also just built myself a little link through underneath the river into the storage system so I can just go back and forth at my heart's content and whilst I was over here again another thing that I discovered was that when there was stuff coming into these overflow chests so anything that doesn't go into the storage system itself comes into these overflow chests some of it was just genuine overflow where the blocks are going too fast to be picked up by the hoppers themselves and so through here I've built myself a little refill section and what this does is it takes the blocks down here and it brings them up through this pipe on the back side of the storage system and in here where it drops them off into the water stream at the top ready to loop around all of the storage pods and the last thing I did off camera was update these maps for the airship dock so we've now got everything up to and including episode 13 in here including all of the airships that I built last episode and it's on airships that we're actually going to continue so I mentioned last episode that I did have an idea to build a really huge one so these are pretty big as you can see by the scale on the map however over here I have a plan to build a truly huge airship so the first thing that I'm going to need to do for that is to start collecting a whole bunch of resources and the main one of those resources that I'm going to need is some smooth quartz now I've got a fair chunk of it uh, however I will need some more luckily I have got quite a lot of quartz here so if I take some of these and pop that there through to our smelter which I'm not sure if I ever showed you guys this but I have created a little shortcut through to the smelting area so we just just go zoop up here and this our super smelter we can just plonk all of the smooth quartz in all the regular quartz rather if it was smooth quartz wouldn't need to do that a few moments later and voila we have our smooth quartz that should now give us everything that we need from a quartz perspective so we'll pop that back in the storage system for now alongside the quartz i will also need to harvest up some copper which is brilliant because it gives me an excuse to use probably my favorite machine that i've used or i've built all season which is the copper aging facility and it just pops up the copper the flying machines come all the way along not the quickest thing in the world but it's very very satisfying to watch pick up all the copper that is now aged and you can also run this once it's not quite fully aged if you want a mix of other copper types gets to the middle and then the next flying machines come along push it all towards the center and collect up nicely ready to be harvested beautiful and I don't know quite why all the pistons do that but they do and it's fun to watch so absolutely love this thing and I've restocked that now as well and it's already starting to change great result for this build the other resource that I'm running a little bit low on that I will probably need more of is this crimson stem so I'm gonna now have to head back across to my starter village and get my tree farm working the problem being that I only have 10 of the crimson and 17 of the warped fungus types and unlike the other types of tree in this tree farm which is a brilliant design by Ian X04 they replenish whilst you actually use the farm for the nether woods you don't actually get that so I had manually been farming these using these two patches of the nylium. however 
I'm not with that anymore. I want a more automated solution. So I'm gonna clear these out. I'm also gonna clear out our old nether wood farm here with all of this bamboo and, and all this scaffolding rather, and use this space and the resources to come up with something far more automated. And with all of that cleared away, I have got the space that I need. And I'm gonna be making a tutorial that I've seen a design by a YouTuber called Mushu Den. So I will, as per usual, make sure to link that in the description. So check that out if you're interested. But now it's time to get building. And the farm's now complete. And as you can see, it's got a timer that pumps the water across to clear out any items. It uses both of the two types of nylium, which is great because it means you don't need to change those and you can get all of the items. And if I just click this here, you can see, oh, need to click this side, the note block, that once it gets going, it is super, super fast as well. There's loads and loads of stuff that's coming off the back of this. So we've got all of the in, the different warped and crimson plants that we could possibly want. And we'll just stop that now because it's been running a bit before. And then every so often it just clears out with the water, any of the items that are on here and they all come down here. And like I say, I've only been running this for a matter of minutes and already have got so much stuff. It's just crazy. And it's got more than enough of these fungi types for me to get to the next stage, which is taking them over to my tree farm itself and getting myself some of the actual stems. Now I have a much healthier amount of crimson stem in the storage system, I still have one slight problem. And that is for this build, a lot of the crimson stem, if not all of them, are all stripped. And it's such a pain having to switch to your axe in order to strip blocks whilst you're building. It really breaks up your flow. So I am going to utilize the space in the airship that we built at the last episode. And I am going to build a concrete converter and log stripper. One quick build later and the machine is now complete and it only took me two minutes to build so I didn't bother building this on camera but it is really really simple it's by a youtuber called eagle eye 621 so of course I will pop the link in the description to the video on how to make this and yeah basically it does the trick now the axe that I'm using is a little bit too powerful because it chops so quickly it doesn't always strip every log so sometimes you do have to put them back through the process again but in terms of what it does um, and I've already stripped more than three stacks here it definitely does the trick and it'll make it so much easier for building so basically you put the logs in your offhand you've got a dropper here to give you some more logs and then you press both the buttons and just lean against this obsidian and just chop away so this is absolutely perfect for what I need like I say it didn't need anything more complicated and anything that does escape I can just pop back through the process with that done, it's time to get prepared for the build. I've now created an absolutely massive dirt platform up in the sky, which is gonna be where I'm gonna be building the airship. As you can see, it's much higher up here than anything else around here. So this is gonna really dominate the skies up here. And it's taken a long time just to put this platform in place, but it's also taken a long time to pull together all the resources. So I've got all of my regular resources and all of the things specifically that I'm gonna need here so in a second it's time to get building but before that i wanted to show you that i've also managed to with this big platform create an incredibly incredibly efficient mob farm underneath here which yeah has just gone absolutely crazy just creepers everything there because the rest of the area around here is all lit up so here we are anyway and it's time to kick off a time lapse Thank you. 
and the mega airship is now complete and i'm super pleased with the result it is much much bigger than the others and it is powered by this giant rocket at the back so i've added a rocket trail coming through and then it is also powered and steered by these four huge propellers on the sides of this and if we come down here we can see also i really love the colors and i'm really pleased that i did actually end up stripping all of this wood beforehand because doing it whilst i was building would have been a complete pain or also you will notice that we've got one of the viewers of the channel here who has uh, been running a bit late and only just managed to catch hold of the airship hopefully they will be able to keep hold right the way until it manages to dock somewhere else and i'm having a look at this at the moment you might be wondering through free cam i'm actually checking it out from over here but if we head back into my body here and try and fly up and get straight in can we do it we can smash our face a little bit but we made it on board so this gives some brilliant brilliant views from up here we've got some more of the people using the straw statues some more viewers of the channel all the way around here operating some of the machinery looking out as well and in fact one of them is even taking a bit of a nap back here in the sleeping quarters which is also the boiler powering the rocket itself but i do love the view that you get from this it's great to be able to see all of the things that have been built in the base so far but also the area that we're going to be able to expand into here so again really pleased with how this has gone if you are interested in joining the viewers here who have their representations in this build and in the other builds around the base then do let me know in the comments come to the discord and give me your in-game name and i'll be more than happy to add you in but now if we head down to the ground and as i look at the airship up there if you have enjoyed this build then do take a moment to hit that like button make sure that you leave me a comment to let me know because i love reading those and make sure that you're subscribed so you can see the future builds now for the next upgrade to the base and what i am going to be doing is down in this area round here and i have at the moment got a very wily e. coyote and roadrunner style tunnel that doesn't actually go anywhere i want to link this up to the other side of the air Area so that we can start using the space through here so if I come around you can see that we've got this lovely lovely cliff that we built the edge of the cliff and the edge of the cathedral but no way to actually get to it properly or easily from the base itself so I'm going to be coming down here connecting through coming out somewhere around this area with a tunnel and I have an idea for a cave as well so first things first I'm going to need to dig this out however having looked at my supplies I am getting a bit low on the number of beacons that I get so first things first I need to head to the end and over here I need to get myself some more nether stars which means some more withers And whilst I'm here, I may as well also start using my Wither Rose farm. And whilst we're here, I'm running very low on copper, so I'll get some of that as well. 200 levels later and a whole bunch of copper blocks, then I am ready to go back. So through we go. Perfect. Now let's get digging. And after a little bit of tidying up and patching some of the holes that I managed to knock in the ceiling, I've now got the space that I need to create this cave. And it's quite a big area. It's going to come out here. There's also going to be a build in the side of this cliff and another tunnel connecting up from here because you know me, I like having multiple ways from getting from one place to another. So at the moment, all of the resources that I've dug out are going through the system into the storage area. But I do need to find one more resource out in the world and that is I need to go and get myself some more calcite and for that I need a stony peak and luckily I've not needed to head too far so I've come across a, maybe a thousand one and a half thousand blocks and managed to find this teeny tiny area it really is just this chunk here however it does have a lovely vein of calcite in here it's also got quite a chunk of andesite which is always useful so I am gonna get mining and get back to the base and with that completely mined away, I've got a good chunk of calcite to add back into the storage system. 
But I'm going to keep this in this box now and add the other resources that I'm going to need for the build, ready to get everything in the cave completed. My incredibly colourful Shulker monster is now in place with all of the resources that I'm going to need for this build. So now to get going in a time lapse. And the cave and the road tunnel through are now complete as we head underneath the cathedral. Unfortunately, it's got a bit grey here, but you'll see that I have added a whole bunch of straw statues into these buildings and just dotted around the place. Just to add a bit more life to this area. So this is now looking fully complete. And this tunnel carves through the mountain. It's got its own walkway that goes next to it with some steampunk machinery and there's plenty of room as you can see for this van to bring some goods from the dock area right the way through to the next section of the base but if we go through this little walkway first of all and it comes out by the canal down here so there's a fork in the canal one bit of it goes this way another bit's going to head that way in the future but i have built this fantastic building up here which has just got a whole bunch of machinery in this giant cog on the front it goes through with some more conveyors going into the ground and this comes into here where there's lots of generators and things as well powering some of the machinery that sits inside this mountain but before we check out the cave itself there is something that i do get asked quite often in the comments and that is around some of the shenanigans that i have going on with my lights here we have a lantern that's actually being supported by an anvil now this is a little trick that i learned from the mojang dev ulraf when i was playing with him on the legacy smp and you can do it in any minecraft survival world certainly in java i don't know if bedrock works do let me know in the comments if it does as well but it's a great little trick so i'll show you how to build one of these here so first of all i will build the basic structure and for this I'll need to put just a little bit of a scaffolding in place. So if we head up here, I can then come up and place these on top of this. We put ourselves a hopper and then I put a carpet just on top of that. Now this is where the fun and games actually starts working. So you need a block that you can destroy straight away with one punch. And the main blocks that you can do that with are slime that I have here and also the honey blocks. So by placing two slime here, you can then head up and put your anvils on top. So if I come out and jump on here, get my anvils, put one this way and one this way. And this is a little bit fiddly. It sometimes needs a couple of goes. So you've done that. The secret is that if you use a block like this that is replaceable, and is instantly destroyable i'll show you here just one punch and you can destroy it you can actually trick the game into not doing an update and into putting something in place so what you need to do is double click really really quickly with both buttons at the same time on your mouse and this is why i'm not sure it would work on bedrock unless you're playing bedrock on pc but if you do it right you can actually instantly replace what was in the block with what is in your hand so this works with buttons with any gravity blocks basically and also any hanging blocks that will pop off things so i'll show you again on this side you just immediately click like that i put these in place just in case it doesn't work because it doesn't work every time so that the anvil doesn't crack on the floor but you then take these out the way and pick up your scaffolding and voila you have yourself a lovely lamppost design and like I say you can do this with carpets with buttons holding them up and it's a really really neat trick so yeah that's one that I've been asked a few times in the comments so I thought I'd show you on camera but yeah completely vanilla friendly even though it looks like total total shenanigans like that just shouldn't work and it's a bit cursed but it looks fantastic when it's done but now the main event which is the cave itself and I'm really really pleased with how this amethystine cave has worked out again I've decorated it with some straw statues but as we come through here, we've got this viewing platform and this walkway and we've got these fantastic geodes that have been opened up into the actual cliff themselves. And these have got the amethystine plants growing inside there. So now that these are here, I do not know what this is going to cause. I've got this viewing platform here and I've used some of the trapdoors so that you can actually see through as well. You can open these up and get a great view. 
into the cave itself so you can see all the way around and there's three of these geodes there's one down here and one over here as well and yeah this connects up to the road and then down here as well we've got these frosted glass pits these are just alternating white stained glass and pink stained glass with some light sources at the bottom and then you get this smoke effect going right the way down and there's another one just here you can see it, a small one just down there but yeah plenty to explore which reminds me the next world download for this will be available after this video to my patrons so if getting hold of this world is something that you're interested in do check that out with the link in the description and yeah it's available to all tiers of patrons so if you want to support the channel and get hold of this world then you can by looking in that description and following that link but yeah this is supported from the the roof and this is part of the reason last episode that i needed to set up the skulk farm because there is as you can imagine an awful lot of skulk going on in here this gives a really really nice effect with the the stars glowing almost in in there and this hangs down from the ceiling this walkway we've got also this lovely roadway that goes along and connects through and comes out here which is going to be the next area for expansion and one of the other tricks that i'm pretty pleased with is using these pots these new pots that in the future thank goodness are going to stack because having these individually in your inventory is a bit of a pain and then using these connected through the lanterns to have support so you need to actually put the lanterns on the chains to have this connecting and yeah i'm just really really pleased with how this area has come out it gives a whole lot of atmosphere i've built a lot of houses and a lot of buildings this was just something a little bit more organic a little bit different just to add to the lore of the area with these amethystine geodes that we've opened up here but also functionally connecting up from the base that we can see through here and i've deliberately put this in place to block the sight line so when you walk through here everything opens up once you get past that van and you can see into this cave uh, and yeah that's everything for this episode i hope you have enjoyed it hit the like button hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment it really helps the channel if you have enjoyed it and i'll see you all next time I'm on AD Craft. Hello there and welcome to AD Craft. I've spent more than a year building a huge steampunk city in Minecraft Survival. Last episode we built the mother of all airships and created an epic amethystine cave connecting up the base. Today we have by far the biggest terraforming project yet and a massive steampunk bridge to expand to the new area. All this plus a new contraption for the hardest wood to farm in the game. So settle in and relax as we head into AD's adventure. But first of all, now that I've connected up the under mountain section through the amethystine cave out here, I need to make sure that I've got space so that I can connect up this road. Now I am going to be using this mountain later, so I don't want to do anything with this, but I am going to have the road going off this way and connecting around, and I do want to have the road going off this way as well. As you can see, there's a big cliff in the way full of sand and sandstone, so I need to get that moved. I also want to build out this section of the stone area so that I can have a set of stairs going up to the top of this plateau just to give another route down so i'll need to get myself some resources in order to do that and i think the best way to do all of this is going to be in the form of a short time lapse With a little bit of decoration this is now complete and i'm super pleased with how this has turned out the side of this cliff did look a little bit featureless before but now it's given that element of detail with just some little touches just really pleased with how that works and if we head up it links up to the other walkways that i'd built through the cliff itself and brings us out by the absolute legend that is Technoblade surveying the things beneath. But now I have a bit of a problem to solve. I've been using a lot of the new woods, particularly the mangrove wood, and I haven't got a very good way to farm it. I got a whole bunch of it when I first went over to the mangrove swamp, and I really, really don't want to go back over there. So I need to build myself a farm. 
And the first step that I'm going to need to take is to remove my existing propagule farm and build one that is more efficient so that I can get enough propagules to actually support the farm that I'm going to be building. And this is going to be a design by Il Mango, but first of all, to clear this out. And now that space is nicely cleared out with all of the resources collected up in here, I can start building the farm itself. And what a design it is. I have just used a couple of pipes to make this look a bit more industrial, but actually I don't think it really needs any more decoration than this. But if we come up here and turn it on, as we go like this, that it is ridiculously fast. So this is more propagules than I could ever need. It gives something like four or five a second and it's crazy. Before I got that far though I did what any good minecrafter does and gets completely distracted by getting a whole bunch more of the other wood types. Oh dear. And the mangrove farm is complete and I'm really really pleased with it. As you can see I've been doing some testing and it is now working. It is quite a complicated machine, but it is a fantastic tutorial and there is a world download as well. So in the end, I ended up using a Lightmatica schematic to make sure I'd put everything in the right place. And that definitely helped. Check out the tutorial, obviously I'll pop that in the description. But if I go over here and show you how this works, we come down the bottom here, we head up, and there's two ways up because I've just built some little stairs up. We come back down this way, we stand here and then we just hold down with the click button and each time that grows we get given a new propagule as well. It does use quite a lot of bone meal and is more industrial than most of the farms that I would build but it does mean that I don't need to run it for very long to get absolutely loads and loads of wood. And as you can see from the chests just from running it for a very short period of time that has given us about eight nine stacks of the mangrove wood which is absolutely brilliant the benefit from the hours and hours that i spent doing that though is every single one of these chests in my storage system for all of the different wood types is now absolutely full so i've got all of the woods that i will need for a very very long time but now I need to get some resources together because over here where we built this road earlier there is an awful lot more terraforming to go. So I'm going to be adding a huge huge mesa and this plateau that is going to be similar in style to this at least is going to be significantly bigger. In fact there is more terraforming in this particular project than everything that I've done in the series so far. So I do need to go and collect the masses and masses of resources that I have dug out, get them all ready, and then I can start building. And a little while later, alongside adding this beacon in, I've now created a shulker monster for the first phase of this build. Now I'm gonna have to break this down into a couple of phases through this episode, just because the sheer amount of building that I've got to get done. So at the moment, as it stands, we've got all of these regular colored shulker boxes full of terracotta. We've got all of the orange terracotta, bunch of brown, and then some of the other colors as well. And just some bits and bobs down here that I'll probably need for filling in holes and such. So the only thing left to do is to kick off a time-lapse for the first phase. And phase one of the mega terraforming project is now complete. And this is by far the smallest phase. 
So I've created a nice double height plateau that's built into the terrain around here. There's some gaps, but those will be filled in a bit later. And we've got this one over here in this big empty area that is also just kind of tying the two sections together so it doesn't just stop at the edge of that biome. But one of the things that I've noticed is that although I've got all of the different effects at the moment, I'm not going to have those when I start building out. So I need to get myself some more beacons. I've got a beacon under here. I've got space for a beacon under here. And although I've got plenty of beacons themselves, the items that I need to actually build the beacons, I've been using an awful lot of iron and I'll probably be needing the iron for other things later on in the series. So I want to switch away from using iron. And the best way to do that is to use my gold farm in the nether. And this thing is absolutely fantastic. I haven't been using it in a while and I've spent a lot of the gold either on trading with the piglins or selling to the clerics to get things like redstone. So now I need to head up and do a fair bit of AFKing. And having been AFK up here for just over a few hours, uh, they there is quite a lot of gold waiting for me at the bottom. I've already managed to craft the vast majority of it into blocks. So this has given me all of the blocks that I'm gonna need for all of the beacons around the new area. Time to take this back to the zone and then it's time to get building again. And I've used all of that gold now to put in place all of these beacons. So I've got a beacon here, I've got another one over here. All of these will be hidden at some point, the other one being right the way over here. So as you can see from the distance just between this one and the other one over there, you can see it's gonna be quite a big build and it's also gonna go all the way out over the sea here as well. So yes, this is gonna be absolutely huge. And I have brought out, because of that, a whole bunch more resources and refilled some of these boxes with some more stuff that I'm gonna be needing because there is a lot, a lot. So now it's time for an absolutely mega time-lapse. And after so many hours of building, I am finally done. And this really, really did take a huge amount of time. As you can see, the phase one bits that I did were just tiny in comparison to this. And in fact, between all of the sections that I've built so far, I checked my previous world download and across the five different terracotta types that are in this particular build, I have placed well over 30,000 blocks. So that isn't bad going, is it really? So yeah, super pleased with how this has gone. So down here, I wanted to connect it to the water just because I had the idea of creating this kind of tunnel underneath. I'm thinking of maybe having some buildings that are going along here connecting to, to the sea because this section is, as we see the crane over there, we're gonna I want to extend the dock out a little bit more. I've got a fantastic idea for a build inspired by our original starter house that I am gonna build over here. So yeah, I wanted to make the space for that and potentially give a viewing area for this. I've tried to kind of keep things flattish so it'll be easier to build on, but not so flat. As you can see, we've got different layers going on here. If we head up, we can see right the way from the top that actually we've got some great transitions. We're going to have the road going round here. Probably there's going to be another building and then the road going that side to connect up to the dock. So we'll have two exits from the dock on this side and one 
on the far side there in front of our boatyard and then yeah lots and lots of bills loads of room for me to expand into now that we've got the super mega airship here and of course this plateau as well and this plateau itself is going to be connected up to the main build by a giant bridge that I'm going to be building a little bit later on that comes from probably about here to just about over there why do I put myself through these things well, I mean, the simple reason for that is it's going to look absolutely epic. The other thing that I really love that looks epic here is this cave stroke tunnel, I think, that goes through. So once I've kind of put things inside this, it's going to go brilliantly. But I love the way that this just opens up and you start to actually come through, see some of the builds that we've already got in that area over in the existing portion. And just as you come around, you can see right the way through to the airship dock and the funicular railway all of the pipes just yeah i love some of the views that you're going to get from here and of course when you've got this huge bridge with massive great arches going underneath as well that is going to look amazing so yeah that's going to be the next thing to do but before i get round to that <coughs> over here at the chicken powered skulk farm where I am using this quite a lot in between episodes and just in general because it's really fun and because I love watching the skulk spread but I'm just not happy with how this is decorated so I am going to be doing a big bit of decorating so if I stand here and if I turn rapidly like this and the decoration is now complete and I'm really pleased with how this has turned out it did take quite a lot of fiddling to make sure that everything was working correctly. But if we come through here, we've obviously got some nice decoration on the walls. And this links through up to our sugarcane farm and cactus farm up there as well. And when we come through underneath here, this is the access to make sure that I can harvest all of the skulk. So the skulk gets pushed along in this pipe underneath. Once it gets to the end, it gets pushed across and pushed up and then pushed out and there's an access up there as well so I can get to either the bottom and mine it or the top if I prefer. We also have some further decoration if I come up here we've got some decoration up here on top of this section and then up onto the roof where there's just a load of barrels and I've connected this up with some little walkways so this comes through from the outside here we can come straight in and we can either go across the top or we can go down to the sides. So I've added some little touches like a little bit of damp getting through some of the slime leaking out and kind of infecting the walls and just being carried on through there. There were lots of big open spaces so I've tried to use some of these chain designs with the lights which adds extra lighting to the room and also looks really really cool. The other thing that I've done with this is to change the tunnel as well. So this was just a basic tunnel. I've made it taller. I've used some skulk in the designs and I have also made it so we've got this glass walkway through. And one of the things that I really liked, you can see the underside of the bridge, but you can see through to this little airship as well, which is cool. And then if you look this way, you can actually see through to the crane. So this is quite a little cool walkway that comes through, brings us all the way through into exactly the same place in the base, and that can just be closed off. But now on to the next thing, which will be collecting all of the resources, because as mentioned earlier, I have a giant bridge to build. Back over between the cliffs, I have got all of the resources ready to go and filled my inventory with various different things that I'm going to need. And now it's time for the final time lapse of the episode. come up through this doorway we will see the bridge is now complete 
and I absolutely love how this has turned out. I put in a gradient going through from some sandstone through to some of the mud bricks just to give it a bit more visual interest and that means that with the tones it actually blends into the surroundings quite well uh, but at the same time it's still highly visible with this polished deep slate in here as well. The other thing that I absolutely love about this is if we come up here that you can see it's on an angle so I've built the entire thing on an angle nothing too severe but enough that when you look at it down here it looks really really good it gives that element of straightness and you can see the car with one of the straw statues in place which reminds me if you are interested in becoming a straw statue in the episode please do let me know in the comments and pop along to the discord so I can take your username and we will get you into the next episode but there is one more thing now that's left to do and that is to map out the area so as you can see I've added a an in progress shot to the next set of maps here so this was the last episode after we built the mega airship and now this is the mesa expansion that we've done but I need to now fill in this bigger one that will cover the whole base for the finished result for this episode so now I need to take my maps out and start getting those updated and now that that update has been done I can see all of the progress from this episode which is basically everything in this area so a huge amount over 40,000 blocks have been placed in this episode alone and that's not even including the farm or the decorations and if you have enjoyed the episode and want to see more make sure to check out these videos from the channel that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy <laughs>